Jell-O too. And our host, Vincent Van Gogh. And he brings it to you. Vampires have a most undeserved reputation. They're actually quite lovely people. Now, how in God's name would you know that? Because, as a matter of fact, in my youth, I at one time shared a London flat with an actual vampire. It's true. He drank blood. He never went out during the day and listened to Alice Cooper non-stop. Are you speaking of your friend Clive? Why, yes, indeed I am. Clive works the night shift at King's College Hospital. And he hasn't an affinity for blood, but for Bloody Mary's, the drink. Well, that may all well be true. However, how do you explain the listen to Alice Cooper part? See, my logic has utterly befuddled you. Ah, yes, of course. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. This is my lovely muse and beautiful bringer of trouble, the well-spoken and garrulous Miss Tangella and the... Doubting Thomas to this side is my otherwise well-informed and often quoted manager of the manor, the well-heeled Mr. Livingston. My purpose in summoning the topic of vampires is because tonight we shall be joined by someone who knows them well. Quite well. In fact, she has such a close relationship with these Newmans of the night that she conducts actual tours in San Francisco to places where you can find these nocturnal fiends. For with us tonight will be the wonderful Kitty Burns, conductor and creator of the Vampire Tour of San Francisco, a nighttime safari through the streets of the city by the bay to the niches and nooks rumored to be occupied by our most favorite nocturnal fiends. She'll regale us with tales of these metro-dwelling incubi while we watch tonight's film, which is 1960's City of the Dead. Yes, we know you've probably seen it before, but it's been two years since we've shown it last, and we couldn't dig up anything better for you tonight. Hopefully, we'll have something new for you next week. Terra in the Haunted House. You found it in the attic. Excellent. Spool it up next week. Livingston, you may soon be out of a job in our acquisitions department. She can have it. In any case, don't you dare go away, because it's going to be another night of vampire hunting fright right here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome to Creature Features. It's that time of the week. You know, it's my favorite time of the week. Mine too. You know, uh, the other six days of the week I spend just going like this. <laughs> it's not, I'm like looking at my non-existent watch wondering when it's going to be Saturday again. Yeah. Yay, Kitty Saturday. Kitty Burns. <laughs> you, you know, she, we had her on, how many years has it been? Two, uh, three? Two years. Two uh -huh. years. All right. Yeah. So she does a vampire tour. I mean, it's the vampire tour. It's, I think, the only one in existence, is it not? In San Francisco. In San Francisco. Yes, they well, exist in New Orleans, too. Oh, uh, well, I bet this one's better. <laughs> <laughs> no, in New Orleans. There is a house in New Orleans they call the Rising Sun. Yes, they, yeah. Right. No, no, no. That's, it's, a, it's a place of bad news. Yes, so, it uh, is. We're going to watch City of the Dead. 
with mm-hmm. the woman who runs the City of the Dead tour or the Vampire Tour uh-huh. of San Francisco. It's going to be fun, right? Yes, it is. And you're going to tell us about everything you do. Uh huh. And everything you've been up to. Oh yeah. And you're going to tell us about this wonderful hat. Oh, this beautiful my hat. chapeau. Yes. No, it's an amazing hat. You need to see it in person <laughs> by taking one of the tours. All right. Well, what do you say we start this film when we come back and get a chat with us? Sounds good. All right. Off we go. City of the Dead, 1960. It's a nice film, I'm told. Hast thou consorted with the witch Elizabeth Selwyn? No. Burn the witch! We, the people of Whitewood, Massachusetts, condemn thee as a witch. May the flames cleanse thy soul of its evil, of its lust for blood, but may they bring about the death of Abigail Adams.
my pact with the Orusible. Hear me! Hear me! I will do thy duty for all eternity. For all eternity shall I practice the ritual of Black Mass. For all eternity shall I sacrifice unto thee. I give thee my soul. Take me into thy service. Orus, listen to my servant. Grant her this pact for all eternity, and I with her. And if we fail thee but once, you may do with our souls what you will. Make this city an example of thy vengeance. Curse it! Curse it for all eternity! And let curse. me be the instrument of thy curse! Hear me, O Lucifer! Hear me! She's making a curse! Burn, witch, burn, burn, burn! So shouted the people of Whitewood when they burned Elizabeth Selwyn in 1692. Though, as I've said, little is known today of the actual practice of witchcraft in 17th century New England, superstition, fear, and jealousy drove the Puritans to accuse their friends and relatives of consorting with the devil. Raiding around huge bonfires, repeating vindictive chants, they consigned the poor creatures to the flames. The tortured souls cried out in agony as the flames mounted higher and higher. Burn, witch! Burn, witch! Burn, burn, burn! Dig that crazy beat. Shh. That will be all for today. Tomorrow will be my concluding lecture on the history of witchcraft in 17th century New England. I shall bring along some illustrations which I'm sure will interest you all. I'll bring the matches. <laughs> Maitland! Since you chose to attend these lectures, I had hoped that it was in a spirit of scientific curiosity about the subject. That'll be all. Well, how could you? He takes it all so darn seriously. He's got you all hypnotized. Oh, Miss Barlow. Yes, Professor. Can I see you for a moment, please? Yes. What about our date? I'll Look, um, I'll wait for you outside. Huh? Yes, Professor. Rather a difficult young man, that. I fear that you are more of an attraction to him than my poor efforts. However, I've been reading through your papers, Miss Barlow. They show a very sound appreciation of the subject. I want to go to New England to do my senior paper. Mm -hmm. They're really quite good, you know. Well, I'm not quite satisfied. I feel I need some first-hand research. I want to get the atmosphere. Find out how widespread witchcraft really was. What the witches were really like. Well, that might take a little time, you know. Well, I have the time. My brother and I were going to spend our vacation with our cousins. What I'd really like to do is to get a room in the smallest, oldest town in New England I can find. Check through all the town hall records. Recheck the libraries. Talk to the Puritan descendants. Make a really thorough investigation. Your brother is professor of science, Miss Barlow. I hardly think he'd be very interested in the history of witchcraft. Then I'd go alone. You don't think he'd object to that? You leave Richard to me. He's picking me up here for lunch. Hello. Let's have a look at some mail, shall we? Dear Vince, please show better movies. Dear Creature Features, love your show. Please keep it going forever. Dear Creature Features, please come to a Comic Con in our city. Dear Vince, please make a Creature Features movie. And on and on and on. You know, though, Livingston, that movie idea could be rather interesting. Then we could finally document just how much trouble Tangella inflicts upon the good citizens of Bodega Bay. Yes, I could just see it now as Exhibit A on the prosecutor's table. 
I hadn't thought of that. As much as we'd like to do every single one of these things, it's quite difficult to do on our meager budget. However, with your help, we can! Consider becoming a Creature Features patron. For just a few dollars a month, you can help us get better movies, more guests, and we might even be able to make that motion picture so many of you have asked for. And if you're willing to spend more with your friends here at Polter Manor, there's some additional benefits as well. So visit the link below and become a patron member for Creature Features. You won't regret it. Yes, you will. Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are still with the Beautiful Kitty Burns. The you know, uh, one thing that confuses me is somebody who would do a vampire tour. I think would be like ghoulish. Yes. You're not ghoulish. Oh yes, I am. You know, perhaps you could oh. behave ghoulish, but oh, you don't yes. look like a ghoul. Oh, you haven't seen me at midnight. I think you're girlish. I'm a girlish ghoul. A girlish ghoul. Yes. You should have a thing called Ghoul's Night Out. <gasps> yes. Excellent. Yes. No, it's kind of like this film. So, uh -huh. City of the Dead. You know, they're always burning witches. I know. You know, witches they, are nice people. They are. I mean, you know, go get some lumber uh -huh. and make your fire with real wood and don't burn the witches. No. No, they don't hurt anybody. No, well, they do. If, well, if at a distance. Burn them, and if you burn them, they make deals with the devil. Well, yeah. I mean, it hurts to get burned. No, I know musicians who made deals with the devil and it never ends well. Ooh, yeah. I bet. Yeah, yeah I've yeah. heard about that. Right, right. They bite off animals' heads. They, you know, have these yeah, well, horrible that's things. That's not always true. I was Ooh. accused of biting the head off a prawn. <gasps> you well, were? It was not a live prawn. It was part of my lunch. Oh, well, there you go. No, but as the news traveled, oh. you know, the old telephone game? Yes, exactly. No, it soon became Vince Vandal bit the head off a live prawn. Oh. That was terrible. I'd never heard of prawn. Oh, I wouldn't no. either. All right, enough no. about me. Let's talk about you and your tour. Okay. So uh. let's say I sign up for your tour. Mm-hmm. Tell me everything that happens. Well, we meet on the corner of California and Taylor. And Just you and I? Yes. I have well, done private, private tours. You do private tours, but yes. typically uh -huh. you have a group of how many? Usually about 30-ish. 30 people? Mm -hmm. Sometimes oh, more. I've had up to 95. 95 Yeah. Uh-huh. I would have had over 100 that night, but two people called in sick. Their oh, parties goodness. called in they sick. They called in sick because they're sick of all the people. I know. <laughs> All right, so but, you meet, and then... Yes. Um, after I get everybody's tickets, I have a raffle. And I raffle off a very fun vampire prize. I'm sure that's and, wonderful, but I want to hear about the tour. Okay, the Not tour? the promotional materials. Oh, no, 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 no. This is... Okay. The tour uh, starts at Grace Cathedral. Right. And we go to six stops on top of Knob Hill... And you never know who we're going to meet on that tour. Vampire wise. Yes. Yes. Sometimes they show up in Huntington Park. Actual vampires. Yes. And sometimes I don't even know they're going to be there. So are these vampires you're familiar with or just like, oh, look, there's a vampire? Nope. There are ones I'm familiar with and they right. just crash the tour. So you're like, hey, Steve, come on over and say hello. Well, actually. Vampire Steve. Yes. Uh, Choker Barnes is one that I talk about on the tour, and he is has that, shown That's up. a name? It's not a complete sentence? No, it's his name, and he's named that for a reason. Choker Barnes. Choker, yeah. Sometimes he gets a little edgy, and, you know, it's just too bad for whoever's nearby him. This is beginning to frighten me. All right. Oh, it should. We're, we're going to pick this up 
after the next segment of the film. I want okay. to hear the rest of this tour detail. Okay. But first, we're going to get back to City of the Dead. All right. I'm told. All right. So you stay with us. You guys stay with us. And uh, you know me. I'm stuck here. Nan, darling, I still don't see why you have to go after this Whitewood place. No. I thought we were going to have some time together during this vacation. You know I want to be with you. It's just this is important. Look, what the heck can you find that hasn't been found before? I don't know. It's just that maybe, hidden in some attic or buried in some old antique shop, there's something that might give a whole new outlook to the subject. Oh, what new outlook can there be? You're a science student, honey. You know how important research is. But this isn't about anything real. This is just superstitious people burning silly old women. But suppose the women weren't silly. Suppose they really had a pact with the devil. A pact that could have supernatural power. Oh, come on. What kind of power? I don't know. Oh, look, it's no use, Bill. We've both tried our hardest to talk her out of going. Do you really think she will find anything worthwhile? Well, I think we have to respect her desire to find something new, even if we, even if we don't agree with the subject. Agree with it? I've never heard so much nonsense as that guy Driscoll talks in all my life. Well, here I am, all packed. Oh, I suppose there's nothing I can say will stop you from going, huh? Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll put this in the car. I still hoped you'd change your mind, Nan. Don't worry, darling. I'll be back as quick as I can, and I'll write. Well, don't forget me altogether, huh? I won't. Give Sue my love, and don't forget we have a date at our party. Goodbye, darling. Excuse me, can you help me? I seem to be lost. Sure, if I can. I'm looking for the Wamport Road. Wamport Road? Hardly anyone uses that anymore. Well, my friend gave me the directions. Uh, take Road 28A, turn onto the Wamport Road, bear left at the fork through to Whitewood. Whitewood? Uh, am I that far away? No, ma'am, not far. Not many God-fearing folks visit Whitewood nowadays. If I were you, I'd... If, if you'll excuse me, I'm in a hurry. Which way is it? Well, follow this road about two miles. You come to a fourth. There'll be a sign, Wamport Road. Turn left, keep straight. There'll be Whitewood. Thank you very much. Wamport Road? Wamport Road, yes. Oh, good. I was afraid I missed it. Is it uh, Whitewood you seek? Yes. I do. Uh, would I be imposing if... No, of course not. Get in. Thank you. I think the Highway Commission would do something about these roads. Watch out. Here comes another bump. What is your mission in Whitewood? Mission? Well, I'm going there to do some research on witchcraft. Professor Driscoll gave us some very interesting lectures on the subject. And I'm going there to get some original source material. Do you know Whitewood? I've known it for many years. Do you go there often? Fairly often. Oh, then you must know the Raven's Inn. I shall be resting there. Oh, so shall I. Oh, my name's Nan Barlow. My name's Jethro Keane. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you.
just like a picture out of a history book. I feel as though I were in the 17th century. Why hasn't Whitewood been written about? As off a beaten path, few tourists come here. For Whitewood, time stands still. Look at that church. Must have been beautiful. What a shame they let it get so run down. Straight on? Yes, follow the road around. Ah, oh, there it is. What a lovely old building. 17th century, at least. How picturesque can you get? Right by the graveyard. Yes, it has not been used for more than 200 years. Any witches buried there? There are indeed. All in a section of unconsecrated ground. Spooky, isn't it? Well, keep your fingers crossed for me, Mr. Keene. I hope Mrs. Newells has that room. I didn't hear you come in. Are you Mrs. Newless? Mm. Oh, uh, I'm Nan Barlow. I was told I might find a room here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was recommended by a friend of mine, Professor Driscoll. Perhaps you know him. That will be all, Lottie. Sorry to keep you waiting. Unfortunately, Lottie cannot talk. I've often told her not to answer the bell. Oh, poor thing. Then you're Mrs. Newless. I am. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to have a room here for two weeks. The hotel is quite full. Oh, the guests are never about at this time of the day. Well, I'm a student of Professor Driscoll's. He told me if I mentioned his name, I'd have no trouble. Well, there is a room I could let you have. It's just off the lobby. Oh, thank you. Oh, Mrs. Newless, that plaque... Is it true that Elizabeth Selwyn was really burnt here for being a witch? She was. And do you believe she was a witch? Come along. I'll show you to your room. I hope you will be comfortable. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. Miss Kitty was asked to step away.
by you know whom. You know, I, I hope she was nice about it. She told her about vampires in the basement or something. Oh, you, she tricked her into leaving. Indeed. All right, it's all right. Well, do let us know. We'll have Kitty back after the next segment of the film. But first, we have to do letters, right? We do. Letters are important. You know, we go down to the mailbox every other day, and she sometimes beats us there and steals the mail. She's a brat. All right, how about some mail, Mr. Livingston? There we are. First what have email. we here? This is from Steve. Steve. In uh, Carson City, Nevada reception. All right, so I assume he's in Carson City, Nevada. We have a station up there. All right, message. I'm on Spectrum, formerly Charter, Cable and Cars in T City, Nevada, receiving your show on Channel 193 at 10 p.m. on Saturday night. Probably the same for most Northern NV Cable subscribers. Sorry to find you're not available tonight and your Friday night at 10 p.m. colleague Shock Theater missing on 193 last night. Both shows have had a steady run here since October or so after several months' absence. Well, you know, we can't speak for that, but we should probably give them a call and say, what in the bloody heck is going on, right? I will put that on my list. Yes. Would it possibly speed your return if I was to visit the regional spectrum cable operation here and assertively encourage them to ASAP get your show back on their viewing menu? Well, you know, I, how about just a phone call? You know, call? Ring them and say, will you please put creature features back on? It'll make me happy. That and ask work. your friends to do the same. And ask your friends on other stations as well. Thanks for writing, Steve. No, Steve, right, Steve. Steve. All right, we've got a package. We've got a package. A package of things. Things. It feels like books. No. All right, what do we have here? Letter first, right? If I can find Indeed. it. Oh, a long letter. This is a novel. I can't read all this, Bob Madia. I'll, tell, I'll read the highlights, though. All right, this is uh, two creature features. Uh, Dear Vincent, Tangella, and Livingston from our friend Bob Madia in Dwight, Illinois. Yeah, I've never been to Dwight, Illinois. In fact, I'm not entirely sure if I've been to Illinois. Yes, I think I have. So uh, he goes, I've been enjoying your program Creature Features on YouTube. You bring back many memories of watching Creature Features in Chicagoland when I was a kid. I was watching horror movies with my friends when I was young that first got me interested in strange tales, both fictional and mysterious, which is why I also became interested in Sherlock Holmes. You like Sherlock Holmes, don't you? She likes anything old and British, like me. Uh, also enclosed is a copy of my first novel published last November. Oh, you sent us self-published books. Inspector Less Trade. Bob Madia, look at this. He's an actual author. Oh, look. It's in pounds in euros, the price. That's interesting. Oh, it looks like a nice book. All right, well, I think Tangelo is probably going to want to read this. And see what he sent some other Inspector stuff. Lestrade. Have you ever planned to run Sherlock Holmes' film, Hound the... Oh, look at this. He sent us all these films. I, I don't know if we could run these, Bob, but uh, we'll look into that. And another one, You Can't Kill Stephen King. Well, you know, if we don't... If we're unable to run these films, at least we'll watch them, right? Perhaps. Yeah. It's not like we watch our own show. We can't watch our own show. We've already seen the movie. All right. Uh, he goes, uh, keep up the great, wonderful work. Enjoy the movies and the book. I'm looking forward to many more delightful evenings watching the movies on Creature Features. All the best, Bob Madia. Thank you so much, Bob. We shall enjoy these at some point or another. And she's going to read your book. More? Yes. What have we here? All right. This is from Kurt. Rothens Busher Jr., San Mateo, California. And he goes, Dear Mr. Vincent and crew. You're the crew. You're crew. She's crew. She's cruel. So she's crew with Cruella. an L. With an L. I stumbled across your show over a year ago and have not missed one since. I'm a huge fan and love the show. Tangela and Mr. Livingston, along with yourself, put on an entertaining show every week, and I just can't get enough of it. We, you know, you would think one week, once a week would be too much. But, you know, with some people, it's not enough. It's, it's too much for him. It's fine with me. I'm with you. 
I hope you keep us going for decades to come. Decades. Can you imagine that? Decades. We're gonna we'll, we'll run out of money long before decades, right? Hopefully. Hopefully. It's no fun. Uh, I hope you keep this going for decades to come. Can you please play the movie Revenge of the Creature from 1955? It was the only 3D film released that year and actually has Clint Eastwood in it. Thanks for everything, Kurt. Sam Mateo. Um, a film with Clint Eastwood. Yeah, I don't think we've run a Clint Eastwood film, have we? You know, we're going to try to get this film. We probably won't be able to get it. But if not, then we should run like for a few dollars more, right? That would be good. No, a few dollars more or uh, every which way you can. Or every which way but loose. It's got a monkey. No, I like monkeys. Orangutan. It, yeah, it's monkey-like orangutan, right? I don't know. Is this it? The last Just note? One more. One more note. Then we can get back to the movie. You know, these people want to see the movie. I don't know why you're delaying this entire process. I... Well, you keep pulling these things out of your backside. So this note is from Sloan in Manhattan, New York. You know, I had a, an aunt named Sloan. Sloan was her surname. Well, she's British. It's all the same. First name, last name. It's all the same. How are you doing, Sloan? He goes, Dear Vince, I hate my crummy job and I want to quit. Would you please read my resignation on the air this way? I can notify my manager by suggesting he watch your show. Here it is. Can we do this legally? I have no idea. I mean, I suppose I'm just reading from a script, right? I'm not actually terminating this man. No, of course not. All right. All right. Uh, here is the note. Dear Mr. Reynolds, I suppose that's an employer, right? Mr. Reynolds? A good observation. Right, right. He goes, uh, I regret I must resign my position. Stock analysts of my caliber typically make over $150,000 at other firms, yet I seem to have reached a ceiling of only $135,000 a year. It is also typical that the provided work vehicle at competing firms is a Mercedes-Benz E-Class. The C-Class coupe you've provided hardly compares to an E-Class. Yeah, he's right about that. Please accept my resignation in two weeks' notice. Yours truly, Sloan Broadwater Portfolio Management Division. All right, and he goes on. Thanks for doing this, Vince. If you're ever in New York, let's do lunch. Um, you know, I, I think you could live with a C-Class for a while there, Sloan. But uh, Mr. Reynolds, if you need to replace uh, Sloan, I might be able to do that kind of work, right? Yeah. Oh, of course. Yes. No, I, I've, I've, I bought stocks. Yes. Yeah. I own a fortune in Google. Of course, when I ordered it, I thought I was ordering Google, the peanut butter. And I ended up buying something called Google. And I mean, what in God's name is this? But the, the price went up. So anyways, thanks for writing, Sloan. That's it for letters, right? That's it. Thank you for not pulling out any more. It was getting tedious. All right, if you would like to send us a letter of resignation of your own, send it to the email address you see down here. Or if you'd like to send us a package of books and DVDs like our friend Bob did, send it to the address you see right here. We'll get back with Kitty Burns soon, but first we've got to get back to our film, which is City of the Dead. Don't you dare go away. Yes, it is a nice room. The previous occupants have always found it most agreeable. Well, if there's anything you should need, just ring the bell for me at the desk. Thank you. been so many months. I've counted the days to this holiday. So have the others. It wasn't easy for some of my guests to get here. 
Many had to travel vast distances. I was lucky. The last few miles were enchanting. Miss Barlow is very good company. You must be tired, Jethro. Your room is ready. And the festivities? I am prepared. Oh, Mrs. Newless. I thought I'd have a short look around town. I won't be gone long. I think you'll find the church interesting. Unfortunately, it no longer has a congregation. He will be pleased. I'm told this was once a house of worship. It is still a house of worship. I am the reverend of this church. As long as the breath of life is within me, this house shall remain God's house. It must have been a beautiful building. <clears throat> me, it is still beautiful. I'm sorry. What a shame the people have let it fall into such a state. Strangers rarely come to Whitewood. Who are you? I'm Nan Barlow. I'm staying at the Raven's Inn. I... Why have you come to Whitewood? Well, because I'm interested in witchcraft. Young woman, leave Whitewood. Leave Whitewood tonight. For 300 years, the devil has hovered over this city, made it his own. The people in it are his. Evil has triumphed over good here. Look at my church. I have no parish. No one worships here. His is the power. What power? Leave Whitewood. Leave Whitewood tonight. I beg of you. What power? Leave before it is too late. <laughs> Excuse the mess, we haven't been open long. You have some very interesting things here. Yes, they, they belong to my grandmother. When she died, I came back to sort things out. Oh, I'm sorry. Then you don't live here? No, my family lived here for generations, but I've just been back a few weeks. Would you like to have a look around? Thank you. Oh, I didn't mean to frighten you when I came in. It's just that all the people I've met here have acted like I'm a person from another world. They don't see many strangers here. And I had the most, well, unusual experience with the Reverend. He barred my way from the church. And he talked to me about a curse. And he warned me to leave Whitewood. Can you explain that? No, I can't. Does he often act that way? He's my grandfather. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's happened before with strangers. Oh, the lack of parishioners and loss of his sight has made him bitter and suspicious. 
I'm afraid what with him and the town, I, I was very scared. When I saw your lights, I made a dash for them. I'm glad you did. Um, do you have any books or pamphlets on witchcraft? You do, don't you? A friend of mine... Well, we, we have a collection gathering dust, but why on earth would you be interested in... Oh, I'm sorry, it's really none of my business. Oh, no, that's all right. I'm studying it in college, and I've come here to write my term paper. Well, just wait. I'll see what I can find. That's Elizabeth Selwyn, burned as a witch, March 3rd, 1692. Yes, I know. I saw the plaque in the lobby of the hotel. You were staying at the Raven's Inn? Yes. It was recommended to me by a friend of mine, Professor Driscoll. Alan Driscoll? Yes, do you know him? No, but my grandfather speaks of him. His family come from here. Oh, I didn't know that. Here, I think this will do for a start. What a lovely locket. May I see it? I believe it's quite old. Oh, it is. You're very lucky. I'm even more lucky to have found this. A treatise on devil worship in New England. This must be a very rare book. I'm afraid I couldn't afford to buy it. You can borrow it, if you like. Oh, could I? That would be wonderful. I promise I'll bring it back in a few days. You're very welcome, Miss... Uh... Barlow. Nan Barlow. Nan Barlow. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. strange noises in my room. Oh, possibly the water and the pipes. This is a very old inn. No, it seemed to be coming from the cellar underneath. I hardly think so, Miss Barlow. The cellars do not extend beneath your room. But then why is there a trap door in the floor? The ground was filled in many years ago to strengthen the foundations of the building. But I'm sure well, I... if you insist, I will come and see you. I don't hear anything. Well, just a few minutes ago. Never mind, I'm sorry. You're welcome. But you can see for yourself there is no ring in the trapdoor because there is no reason to lift it. There is nothing underneath but earth. <laughs> Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. You know, I'm going to go try your hairdresser one day. I think you have a no, great hairdresser. I, no, I, I do have a wonderful hairdresser, yes. but she will not curl my hair like yours. Oh. I, I, you know, when it rains, I have these wonderful ringlets. Oh, I bet you do. I know. I, I look like I should be named Percival or something <laughs> like that. I don't know. Anyways, but we are with Kitty Burns, the infamous Kitty Burns vampire <laughs> tour lady operator. And uh, we are watching City of the dead this film know. full of fog fog everywhere i was oh. wondering since you do your thing in fog city yes. san francisco do you ever have nights when it's like low to the ground yes you do oh my gosh it's wonderful there are some nights when you can't see across the street oh nice that must be spooky do you bring like lasers to do like laser shows laser <laughs> vampire shows that would be fun that would be i'll yeah. have to remember that all right so you're talking about the tour okay people meet 
And then yes. you gather them up, and then sometimes you come across these characters. Yes. In the street, which I assume are vampires. Yes, they are. All right. So then, what happens? And uh, sometimes they interject, and sometimes it's just the audience, and because the audience dresses up all year round, not just on oh, Halloween. Do? Like how? As a vampire. Usually, sometimes I'll have creepy. So this clowns. is like a zombie crawl. It's not a vampire tool. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because like I talk ball about hopping and stop. And... No, we don't do that. All right. No, uh -uh. that would make it fun. Yeah, it would. But uh, I tell the history of each of the stops and how vampires played a role in that history. Oh, so give That's... me one stop and one little piece of that history. Uh, yeah, but it can last about fifteen minutes. Oh, I don't want to hear the whole no, no, no. spiel. Mm -hmm. No, no, just, just mention like, all right, this is one place, and I tell them the story about how this happened. Okay, the Knob Hill Cafe. Knob Hill Cafe. Yes, it's only been there for about 25 years, but the reason I bring people there is because that is the site of the most brutal battle between mortals and vampires in U.S. history. This is documented. Yes, it is. All yes, right. it is. In 1888, and a vampire came to San Francisco from London, where his identity still remains a mystery, but he became known as Jack the Ripper. So it did not happen at the Knob Hill Cafe. It's the site. Yes, it was the cafe. Place. Yes, right. it was the cafe that was there before the Knob Hill Cafe, which eventually was burned to the ground to destroy the 50 vampires whose coffins were below 50? the cafe. Yeah, this is beginning to sound a lot like Interview with a Vampire. Um, Did they do the whole show above? Yeah, thing? but we don't go below the ground. Oh, well, no, I, I suppose you'd need special permits or something like that. Yeah, right? and uh, uh, you'd have to have your head examined, too. You know, I, I need to have my head examined anyways. I no, bet. No, I, I do the show. What'd I, they find? This is... Episode 223. I've done 223 episodes. Of oh, this wow. Show. I need to get my head examined. Yes, you do. Yeah, I've done more of the show than Captain Kirk did on Star Trek. <gasps> and alone. you've done half yeah. as much as Law and Order. You know, I call that show Law and Odor. <laughs> I think it stinks. All right, I'm getting the signal. We're going to get back to the movie. I want to hear the okay. rest of this battle story. But first, we're going to get back to City of the Dead. Hey. Don't go away. It's a fun night. Ah, Miss Barlow. I'm afraid Lottie is nowhere to be found, but I will inquire about your locket first thing in the morning. Oh, thank you. Where is everybody? Most of the other guests have gone to services. Services on the 1st of February? Candlemas Eve. The night when the witches mock the rituals of the church. Are you all right, Miss Barlow? Yes, quite. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Miss Barlow.
show up. She, she probably met a good-looking he-witch and is bringing him along to the party. Only they broomstick blew a gasket. Well, it's not like Nan to be late for anything. Aren't you a bit worried about her? Oh, she'll be here. I'm sure she'll make it. Oh, it's probably her now. Well, you answer the door and I'm going to put a record on for some dancing. All right. Hi, Dick. Bill. Oh, what's the matter? You expecting somebody else? Oh, yes, Nan. Look, come in, come in. Well, Nan, didn't you hear yet? We made a date to meet here before she left for Whitewood. Well, she probably got held up. Look, look, give me your coat, huh? Ah, Nan was never late for anything in her life. Relax. Take it easy. Join the party. She'll be here. Dick! Dick, I haven't had a letter from Nan in over two weeks now. Ah, she's probably been too busy working on her paper. No, no, there's something wrong. I know it. Look, will you do something for me? Mm -hmm. Ring up Whitewood, will you? Ask him, ask him if she's left. You serious? Yes, I am. Okay. On a long distance. I'd like to speak with Miss Nan Barlow at the Ravens Inn, Whitewood. No, I, uh, I don't know the phone number. What? Didn't she give you the phone number? Oh, I know, but uh, that's my sister. They say there's no such place as the Raven's Inn. But that's crazy. She's staying there. Give me the police. She left in such a hurry, she must have forgotten to return it to you, Miss Russell. She seems such a nice girl, too. Wouldn't have thought she was the sort who'd forget to return a book. We cannot always judge by our first impressions, can we? I'm not usually wrong about the people I lend my books to. Well, perhaps you'll be more careful in future. Thank you for letting me have it. Remember me to your grandfather. Lottie, get out of the way, you clumsy creature. Yes, we're from the sheriff's office. We had a call this evening. A missing person's report from some college kid named Nan Barlow. The party calling said that her last known whereabouts was the Raven's Inn. Nan Barlow, that's strange. Yes, I met her. When did you last see her? About two weeks ago. She came to my shop and, and borrowed this book. It's quite valuable, and so not hearing from her, I decided to come and get it. Mrs. Newless had it. May I? Yes. Our treat is on devil worship. I must put this in the report. Peculiar things some of these college kids do nowadays. Well, thanks for your help. Come on, Charlie. Yeah. It's 
police. Yeah? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Well? The police sent a car out to the Raven's Inn. Man checked out two weeks ago. I don't get it. Well, neither do I. Look, these are Nan's books and papers. Go through them. See if you can find anything which might give us a lead. I'm going to pay a visit to a colleague of mine. My name is Stephen Dodd. I live in Belleville, Illinois. And I just want to tell you, I just saw the movie The Hearse. And I thought it was fantastic with all them women running around. Yes, sir. Yes, I did. I liked it very much. Anyway, you have a good night, and I appreciate it. And I'm watching more of you. Bye. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. You know, I don't know what to make of this film, Kitty. Kitty Burns, vampire tour operator. These witches are so mean. You know, I've met some witches before, and they're not that cruel. Not all of them. Some of I, them are nice. No, I've never met one cruel witch. Oh, I have. Doing the tour. Oh, you have? Oh, yes. Yes. Well, you know, every witch I've met has always been like butterflies and bells and smells and things like ah. that. You know? You've met the bad one. I did, yes. But, you know, you're talking about, you know, these Battle of the Vampires. I, you know, I'm beginning to wonder if you're an actual tour operator, real person, or a quack. A little of both. A, a little of both. Yes. Uh, I tell the truth and then I quack on occasion. Well, you know, I don't mean like quack like a duck. I mean, oh, quack well, like Dr. Quack. Okay, well, I do both. All right, that's nice. Yeah. But, uh -huh. you know, you were telling me during the break that you've been on the History Channel. Yes. And the uh -huh. Travel Channel. Yes, and HBO and H Showtime. HBO and Showtime. Yes, and CBS National News. We're, we're <laughs> like on three stations in, like, a small cable system in the Midwest. But you're also on YouTube. Right, but you know yes. the people watch YouTube. They're, yes, they're they're a peculiar bunch. Oh yeah, and they're all making terrible comments about what I'm saying right now. Uh oh. No, no, no. They're a lovely bunch. I, we <laughs> love you. We love them all. No, no, no. They're the best. They're hey, all saying you know, things to it's us. great if you don't get Channel 20 in your town, you can have two choices: well, either watch it on YouTube or move. This program used to be on Channel Two. <gasps> ah. And I figured the move to. Channel 20 made it 10 times better. Yes. Right? right. It's wonderful on Channel well, let's 20. Let's just UHF. I, I don't know. How's that work? Where's, I guess UHF starts after 14, right? Oh, Shop I don't know. Home. I'm yeah. not very mechanically minded. All right. All right. Well, <laughs> History Channel. Why? Yes. Uh, because of the history in the tour. It's actually 80, about 85% true history with fun vampire lore and humor mixed in. 80%? 85. 85%. Yes. Uh huh. And it sounds like you had a scientist do the math and <laughs> yeah, me. calculate. 85%. Yes. That's and uh, I've actually had teachers come up to me after the tour and say, you know, I teach history at the University of San Francisco, and I'm shocked at how much truth you tell on this tour. My goodness. All right. So and she's not a quack. I did not mean to be mean, <laughs> but you know, sometimes you hear these things. And it's yeah, like, you do. You know, I, I, I had a warlock on here once. And I thought Ooh. he was a quack and towards the end of the program. Uh-huh. Now he's a wizard. Oh. I was like, I was, I was baffled. He was like the real thing. Does he's he know Harry Potter? No, real, no, I, no I, I bet they wrote Harry Potter about him. Probably. No, an amazing wizard. Anyway, wow. I'll tell you the story during the break. We need to get back to City of the Dead. Yeah. The Dead. There's a city. Not of the undead. No. Well, I imagine there's some undead coming up. 
Who knows? We'll see. All right, let's get back to the film. Please do not go away. I'll cry. of light accept the sacrifice You weren't in. No, uh, no, I wasn't. Would you care to go in the study? Set yourself down. Thanks. You take a drink? Ryan soda. Ice, please. Now what's on your mind? A man's missing. And she has been since the day after she arrived at Whitewood. Really? You quite sure? That's what the police said. What are they doing about it? Carrying out a routine check. I, I don't suppose they can do much more until they've got something definite to go on. Well, I would have thought there was a very great deal more they could do. What? As far as they're concerned, she disappeared two weeks ago and no one in the village seems to know anything about it. What did you come see me for? I thought you might have some ideas. Why did you send her to Whitewood? Because it was the best place for her research. And you suggested she stay at the Raven's Inn. Sure, it's the only inn there is. With an unlisted phone number? The inn has its own clientele, Barlow. It doesn't need to advertise. How do you know it so well? Because I was born in Wetwood. I see. And you'd have every reason to believe she'd be perfectly safe in going there. I have no reason to suppose that she wouldn't be. Nan struck me as being perfectly capable of taking care of herself. Yeah, I grant you that, but why hasn't she come back or let us know? Look, Barlow, I can understand your anxiety, but I'm quite sure there's nothing for you to worry about. Nothing at all. She's probably got absorbed in the subject and gone off someplace. I wish that all my class had her application. Yeah, well, I'm going to find out where this application led her. I'm going to retrace every step Nan took. I'm either going to find Nan or know what happened to her. I can't stop you from going. No. I'm not afraid. Afraid? Why? Well, if anything did happen to your sister and somebody else went along to try and find out about it. The same thing might happen to them? Possible. You seem to think something happened to my sister then. No, I just think you're jumping to conclusions, Barlow. Maybe, but uh, I shall find her. Professor Driscoll? Yes? I don't like to disturb you, but may I see you? Well, of course, please come in. Good luck in Whitewood. Thanks. I'm sorry, but did you say he was going to Whitewood? Yes, he is. Silly to be surprised, but uh, I've just come from Whitewood. Really? Quite a coincidence. My own family happens to come from Whitewood. As a matter of fact, I was born there. Yes, I know. Please sit down. Thank you. Do you care for a drink? No, thank you. I think you know my grandfather, the Reverend Russell. Russell? Oh, yes, of course I do. How long have you been living in Whitewood? Since my grandmother died a few weeks ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, now, how can I help you? I've come about a pupil of yours, Barlow, Nan Barlow. Yes? She came to Whitewood two weeks ago. I met her and liked her, and she told me that she was a student in one of your classes, that you recommended that she stay at the Raven's Inn. That's quite right, I did. Well, that's what I've come to see you about. On the day after she arrived, she disappeared. Oh? Later, the police came asking questions. The family were worried. I thought you might have their address. And why do you want her family's address? Because I have something of hers I want to return. Well, you just leave it with me and I'll make sure they get it safely. Well, I don't want to trouble you. If, if you just give me their address. As you wish. 
Her address is Dorchester Street, 225. She lives with her brother. As a matter of fact, he's a colleague of mine. You just met him. He was leaving when you arrived. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of work to do. I'm rather a busy man at the moment. Of course. Thank you for your help. Not at all. I hope it achieves something. Well, you will remember me to your grandfather, won't you? Yes, of course. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Russell. Nan's locket, all right. As far as I know, it's unique. I gave it to her. Where did you get it? The servant at the inn gave it to me. It was strange. I don't think she wanted Mrs. Newless to know I had it. Mrs. Newless? Well, she runs the inn. Well, why did you come here, Miss, uh, Miss Russell? I found this. It's Professor Driscoll's notepaper. I found it in the pages of a book I lent your sister on her first evening in Whitewood. When she didn't return it, I went to the hotel. What was the book? An old book. A book about witchcraft. Do you believe in it, Miss Russell? I don't know. Sometimes I almost think I live with it. Live with it? It's an obsession of my grandfather's. Up till now, I didn't take him very seriously. He's an old man. But now I'm beginning to wonder if what he says isn't true. What does he say? That there's something evil about the village. That on certain nights, the inhabitants leave the streets, close their doors, and stay behind them. That on these nights, the dead come to life. Nights like Candlemas Eve? What do you know about Candlemas Eve? It's in one of Nan's books. I don't believe it. Things like this don't happen today. In Whitewood, I wonder. I'm going to Whitewood tomorrow after classes. I, I can give you a lift. Thank you, but I, I must get back. I can't leave my grandfather alone. He's blind. May I come and see you when I arrive? I'd, uh, I'd like to have a talk with him. Please do. It's the house next to the church. Goodbye. Right. I'll see you to the door. Whitewood? Yes. Would you take me along with you? It's a dark night for walking. Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. not approve of number one, or number two, or number three. You are the Reverend Russell's granddaughter, aren't you? Yes, how did you know? I know a great deal about Whitewood. Have you ever been there? None, then. Never seen you. To see me is a special privilege. It's reserved for a chosen few. What does that mean? We'll soon be at Whitewood now. This is as far as I go. You will...
pretty, too. Yes, she is. Very pretty. A living descendant of those who were cursed. It somehow seems to make it better. Another day. And tomorrow. The witches. Which way to Wampot Road? Straight ahead, fork in the road, you see a sign, turn left. You heading for Whitewood? I am. Many people head this way? Not many. Is this the only way in and out of the town? In this direction, yep. You wouldn't remember by any chance a, a pretty girl in a convertible about a month ago? The Barlow girl. Read about her in the papers. Never seen her again. Told the police. Thanks. Could you tell me the way to Whitewood, please? Another one. Straight ahead, fork in the road, you see a sign, Warmport Road, turn left, takes you right in. Well, thanks. Let me warn you, young fella, they don't like strangers in Whitewood. Okay, fine, thanks very much. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like a room, please. The inn is closing. Well, I'll only be here a few days. But the inn is closing. When? In two days. Well, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to stay until then. If you insist. Um, could I... Could I have the, uh, the same room my, my sister had? Still available, isn't it? Yes, it's available. Mrs. Lewis, you told the police that my sister checked out. You are mistaken, Mr. Barlow. I told them that on the morning of February 2nd, I went to her room and found it empty, her bed not slept in, her luggage and car gone, and her bill unpaid. Well, you can put the charges on mine. When was the last time you saw her? On the evening of February 1st. It was shortly before midnight. She'd been in the lobby here dancing with some of the guests. She seemed to be enjoying herself. Did any particular guest pay a, a special attention to her? And not that I noticed. Your sister kept very much to herself. You know why she came to Whitewood? It is not my habit to inquire into people's private business. Well, would the fact that she was, she was investigating witchcraft have antagonized anyone in the village? Hardly. There have been other students here, you know. Besides, your sister was a very agreeable and likable young woman. Well, have you any idea where she might have gone? 
None. Thank you. Now, may I see the room? As you wish. It is this way. If you should need anything and I am not at the desk, you have only to ring the bell. Thank you. Glad you've come. I saw your car outside the Ravens Inn earlier. I wondered what had happened to you. I've been talking with Mrs. Newlis, and then I, I took a walk around the village. Find out anything? Everyone here seems to be afraid of something. And you don't think it's just my imagination? I don't know. Who's to say where imagination ends and truth begins? It's, it's nothing tangible. It's just the way they look at you. I felt it too. May I see the uh, the book that Nan borrowed? Yes. I put a marker between the pages where she must have stopped reading. Just sit down and I'll tell my grandfather you're here. Thank you. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, uh, Kitty, this film confuses me. This is supposed to be occurring in New England. Yes. And all I can hear are British accents. Well, some people confuse New England with Old England, and they oh, forget to why? drop the accent. Oh. You know, yeah. I always thought they should do the mid-Atlantic thing. <gasps> the mid-Atlantic ah. accent. I can never do a mid-Atlantic accent. I can't either. Yeah. No, I'm no. still working on my American accent. It's getting better. Like I can say hamburger. Well, that's good. Right. That's a no, good it's one. Important to uh -huh. be able to say that. Yes, it is. French fries. French oh, fries. Oh, French fries. Yes. I want French fries. <laughs> Kitty Burns. She does the Vampire Tour. She's with us to watch City of the Dead. If you're just joining us, and um, you know, when I watch vampire films, I always think of Transylvania. And there's so few of these films made in Transylvania. Yeah, there are some, but not too many. You know, I've been there. I know you've been there. I want to hear everything. Oh, it is the most wonderful place. The tour starts in Bucharest. And, and this is Romania, right? Yes. So uh huh. You have to speak Romanian. I did. You spoke I, Romanian? Yes, I studied it oh. because I was going over there. So I right. studied it. I learned the basics. Right. And um, we take a bus, and the bus takes you from Bucharest all the way up to 
the Dracula Castle. Oh my goodness. And the highlight of the trip is that we spend the night in the Dracula Castle. You spent the night in yes. the Dracula Castle? Yes. Oh my goodness. Do they have proper loos? Oh yeah. Oh right. yeah. It's all modernized. Uh, about 20 years ago, architects could tell from the ruins and the foundation how it had been built for Dracula in the 1400s. Right. They rebuilt it and they're using it as a hotel. So you can actually spend the night in the Dracula Castle. And what's it called? Dracula Castle Hotel? Uh, yes. It's not like a Hyatt, is it? No, no, nothing like a Hyatt. Well, no, I have no. coupons for that particular Well, I don't, I don't know if it would work on this, but you can always try. Right. Now, maybe during the low season. What's, what's low season for, like, Dracula's Castle? Uh, probably winter, because winters are brutal. But you would think that you'd want to be at Dracula's Castle during a severe storm, would you not? Ah, uh, yes. But, you know, they also do these tours on Halloween. It, the, Halloween oh. is the night you spend in the Dracula Castle. Oh, my goodness. Halloween. Uh, do trick-or-treaters come? Are they like small Romanian children? Who no. no. They don't come to the castle. They take Dracula very seriously. Oh. Very seriously. Right. In fact, the houses in the village right below the castle, every one of them has at least one or two crosses on the roof. Well, perhaps you just simply mistake them for churches. No, they're no. people's houses. With crosses and on the roof. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes, wow. they are still Crazy. terrified of him. My goodness. And here you go, showing up in black with your fancy hat. I know. They're probably terrified of you as well. They probably were. Doing your vampire tours in Romania. Hey, I can start a vampire tour here yes. in Romania. You know. <laughs> All right, let's get back to this film. Let's finish it up, and then we're going to find out what you're doing next and how people could learn more about your tour. Okay. Right? All right, off we go. Back to City of the Dead. Thanks for sticking with us. It's almost over. Don't go away. I warned you, Lucky. Grandfather, this is Mr. Barlow. How do you do, sir? God be with you. Shall we sit where we'll be more comfortable? Here's your chair, Grandfather. You must be tired. I am really tired. I have a little strength left these days for the fight. Won't you sit down? I'll make some coffee. The fight against what, Mr. Russell? Against the evil that besets this village. The people are creatures of the devil. They know no other god. You mean they worship Satan here, today? Satanism was never stronger than at the present time. For 200 years, the people of Whitewood have carried out rituals that mock the church's teaching. I find it very hard to believe, sir. I... Do not doubt, my son. It is real enough. For years, I struggled against the witches. Their master took away my sight. Seems incredible. I have tried to convince others. They, too, found it unbelievable. But I know these people have a pact with the devil to worship him and do his works. In return, he gives them eternal life. Eternal life? Aye. And to seal this bargain, they must sacrifice a young girl on two nights of the year. When are these nights, sir? Candlemas Eve. And the witch's Sabbath. Candlemas Eve, that's, that's February the 1st. And when is the witch's Sabbath? Tonight. Now you know why I came to see you. 
I had no idea it was so late. May I? May I have a rain check on the coffee? I'd like to have a few words with Miss Newless again. Of course. Good night, sir. Good night. I'll see you to the door. God be with us. Miss Russell, do you think that Nan's disappearance is connected in some way with these uh, witches' ceremonies? Yes. Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to come back later, if I may. Please do. And my name is Pat. Oh, mine's Richard. I think I feel better now you're here. Well, I'm, I'm going to stay until I find out what's happened to Nan. Take care. Now drink your coffee before it gets cold. You must not see that young man again tonight. Why not? The devil comes in many disguises. I'll get you a spoon. Grandfather, there's a bird in the drawer. It's got an arrow through it. Go and look on the front door. Shut the door! Shut the door! Quickly! Grandfather, what does it mean? Now listen, my darling. This is their sign. The witch's sign. What can we do? We must leave here. Leave here immediately. Mr. Barlow. Is that for me? Yes. Hello? Dick. Dick, I'm in terrible danger. We've got to leave Whitewood at once. Danger? But from what? We've got to leave... Ah! Pat! Please help me! Patricia! Pat! What's happened, Mr. Russell? The witches, the witches have Patricia destroyed them. Oh, Mr. Russell, how? The shadow of the cross. Use the cross. I adjure the old creatures of salt by the living God.
Hello. Hello, operator? This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. Hair styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. been waiting for you. Dick, these are the dead who killed Nan. Harlow.
Get to a cross! A cross! Shadow of a cross! Settled with Mrs. Lewis. You stay here. I don't understand this, a giant cross. These are not vampires. The cross has a lot of power over a lot of evil be people. Well, you, uh, all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought I was watching a vampire film for a moment. This is a, this was supposed to be a witch film. Yes. We wanted a vampire film for you. We didn't have one. Oh. Mm, well. Fun. Welcome back to the show. We are just finishing up City of the Dead with... Kitty Burns, who is from the city of the undead. Yes. Right? She runs <laughs> there is a the difference. Vampire Tour of San Francisco. Is that mm -hmm. the official title? Yes, it is. Vampire Tour of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And then, so how do we learn more about that? Well, my website is www.sfvampiretour.com. sfvampiretour.com. Yes. That's a long one. That's all right. Yeah. You need to have a long one. Yes, it's you do. Like, 
Mm -hmm. So people don't mistake it for like LA Vampire Tour, right? No. No. Which there isn't. There shouldn't be. It would all be tours of Hollywood studios. It's like, oh, oh yeah, we shot this one here and we shot that one there. There's no yes. real vampires here. It's all there's real vampires in San Francisco. Sorry, LA. yes, there are. There are now. She's wearing the thing. <gasps> yes, she is. You know, we did not know that was you that sent that into us. Yes, it was. Yeah, yes, she loves it. No, she. I she, love it. It looks perfect on her. She wears it when she does her laundry. Oh, I bet she does. No, it's it's like. Princess laundry. Yes. It's, it's hey, a princess never watch. takes off her crown. No, it's lovely. Oh, but thank no. you so much for sending that. You're she, welcome. She used your other name when you sent it. We did not know it was you. So. Well, we would have acknowledged you know. it was you had we known. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. We get gifts all the time. We get Tupperware sometimes. You do? Tupperware in the mail, right. Yeah, it's, why? I don't know why. Oh, well, I, just, a gift we is get, a gift. We get wonderful things. Somebody sent us a dead cat several weeks ago. <gasps> oh, that's not a wonderful well, thing. No, wonderful in the sense that this was a cat that was mummified. Somebody found it. It was oh. placed in a bar, now uh -huh. a drinking establishment. And then oh, um, no. the, the place, it's a very famous cat. We've gotten lots of mail about it saying, oh, I remember seeing that cat up on the wall. So, Ooh. yeah, it's in a box over there if you'd like to take it home with you. I don't think so. Oh, I have no. two live cats. No, I love cats as well. It's it, it's like it's like the King Tut of the cats. Ah. Right? Except it does not have a sarcophagi. Oh, it no. Should, we should make one. Yes. No, <laughs> she's, she's good with wood. I'm sure she's, she she's is. She's better with dynamite, but she's good with wood. <laughs> All right. So, um... Your tour starting back up soon for the season. Yes, Fun it will. Fun stuff. If people want to go on the tour, they need to contact you through the website that we just showed. Right. And then uh, what else? Any more TV programs coming up? Uh, not at the moment, but hopefully soon. Uh, creature features. Yes, like I tonight. will. Like yes. tonight. So you did have one more, but uh, I'm sure there'll be many, many more Oh, come, I hope right? so. Of course. I love being here. Now, and people love being with you. You know, we've, we've read some of the reviews of her tour, and everybody loves her. Oh. You've got, like, an excellent Yelp page. Oh, that's wonderful. Like yeah. Right, we're going to do it one day soon. Oh, All good. right, Kitty, thank you so much for coming and watching this uh, <laughs> dubious film with us. Hey, you know, dead, undead, everybody gets their chance it's all the in same the spotlight. To us. Yes. It's all the same to us. Yeah. And next time you're in town, you make sure you ring us and come on up again. I will. All right. And as far as you guys go, thank you so much for watching our show again. Uh, we hope you're entertained. Next week, we will entertain you again. What are we doing next week again? Just whatever. <laughs> You're she's going to blow her? something up. I have no doubt she's either going to blow something up or torture our poor handyman. So one or the other, <laughs> it'll be worth coming back. We will see you next week. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. So, uh, Kitty, yes? this whole thing about Transylvania has me intrigued. Oh, my gosh. Her and I have always wanted to go. Oh, you should. But it we're is thinking, unbelievable. So next time you go, mm -hmm. can we come with you? Well, Tangela can. 